What's going on, everyone? We're back. Kendon and Dennis here at Victrola in our lab. It's a kind of sunny sort of day, a little bit kind of cloudy. We're definitely in fall mode here. Um, but we're back with a question, and we have just one question this time because I think it uh, bears a little diving into. Um, and that's from Derek W. on Facebook, and he wrote in and said, Any tips for improving a cup of coffee when you're stuck making it in a Mr. Coffee at work? This is like the... Like office the, the, the office coffee yeah. drudgery that is just categorically almost always bad unless you work somewhere that, where they really intentionally do something good with it. This is the this is the, the eternal struggle of being an, an office worker. <laughs> um, so uh, first things first, as we say with everything, uh, there's a few ch- like good coffee practice checklist things, and then we'll also talk about like some maybe some extra pro tips or things like that that are a little further down. First things first, everything's got to be clean. Yeah. There's no quicker way to ruin good coffee than to have dirty equipment. And that's, so that's the, um, the, the brewer itself, like the, the, uh, the tank, the water tank in the back, um, the carafe that it goes into, you may need to buy, get some coffee, uh, like some pure calf or something like that that you can find at, at a store to de- you know, clean that out. The shower head, like it comes down, if you have access to that and can wipe it down. Um, that is going to help as well. Other thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, um, the thing, just, just keeping everything washed, you know, and, 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 and clean so you don't have yesterday's coffee residue there. Yeah. And, then, and then, like uh, Kendon alluded to, the, um, you know, cleaning the, the inside of a machine, you know, over time and, and at the office, you know, or any kind of community brewing situation, um, if somebody's not in charge of cleaning it, chances are it's just Probably never been not. cleaned. Yeah. So a descaler, um, you know, PuroCaf or Urnex or something that you, you actually put in with water um, and send it and send it through a brew cycle, and that goes in and you know you get you get mineral buildup over the years, and it, it, it covers things like like the boilers and the thermostat and and, right. and messes with your temperature and closes down the line, so you're not getting brewing efficiency and, and you know. At, at some point, you know, if, if you've got the, the 1994 Mr. Coffee going on, that may just be, you know, eventually those things just wear out. That was, the, that was the beige one with the little orange, little orange light, switch, yeah. little orange yeah. switch, I think. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, so that, that seems silly to, to mention, but it's also super true. For some reason, sometimes people, not you guys, of course, but some people have this concept that yeah, you just put coffee yeah. on top of coffee and it's because it's coffee and it's fine. It's like, you know, even with water, like you clean out your, you know your Brita filter every once in a while and we clean out that, that entire thing and stuff like that. So it's clean. Done. All right. We, we killed it. Um, next, um, other, other, other good practices for coffee. So this is things like the ratio, which we talked about in episode one. Um, just as a reminder, you want a 1 to 15 to 1 to 18 ratio by weight of coffee to water. So if you can figure out how many ounces you're using, you use that ratio of coffee. About a 1 to 16 is kind of our usual favorite. But you, um, your, your mileage may vary. Um, so start with that to get the right, um, the right ratio there. Other other tips? Yeah, that's you know all all the kind of basics of brewing coffee apply here. That that ratio thing, um, and finding you know with the ratio, it's 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 trying to keep it consistent, and then ultimately just finding which is the ratio that that it makes the most pleasing cup of coffee to you, and that is right. that's what you should go with. Um, but then, yeah, water, uh, filtered water, fresh, cold, filtered water is, is what you want to be using um, to, for brewing. Um, the water temperature, you know, this, this one is, is, is so key because um, water that is outside of, of the range and, and you know, the, the Specialty Coffee Association of America defines that range of 195 Fahrenheit to 205 Fahrenheit. Um, that's just, that's... That's what's one of the main factors for determining the extraction from the coffee, and, and there's you know there's no way around um, Not improperly extracting yeah. your coffee. Many of them get up to like 170 or maybe 180, and yeah, you want something that can get. Yeah. So so temperature, uh, water quality, um, the coffee that you're using is yeah. make, makes a big difference. Um, you know, ideally you're ideally you've got a, a really solid you know great specialty coffee roaster that, that you're using or cycling through trying out yeah, new ones bringing it in um, uh, from yeah from your local shop or ordering it or whatever yeah. yeah yeah and then and then storing it you know whole bean airtight in a cool dry place mm-hmm. um, those those kinds of things to give you the best the best shot at uh, 
the best shot at getting an ideal cup of coffee. Um, you know, if you do have the old coffee brewer that's been around forever and it's on its last legs and the coffee is there but nobody likes it, you know, you could pa pass the old can around and, you know, for any more for between 160 and, and 300 bucks, um, you can get some really nice home brewers that will give you that temperature stability that have a nice thermal carafe so when the coffee's brewed it's going to maintain its temperature for yeah. an hour not two on, hours and yeah. not sitting on the hot not plate the that hot is plate. constantly it. cooking it out yeah. um you know so so it's one of those things again you know and 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 the the specialty coffee association of america again the scaa does have a a list of, there's about six brewers that it is certified as these will give you a good cup of yeah, coffee if you um, google uh, scaa gold certified brewers yeah. you'll find it yeah um yeah, that, those are the ones that get up to temperature, that properly wet the grounds, that keep it, that are easy to clean and all of that. That's another thing, too, is you want it easy to clean, not something that you have to open up and, like, take way apart. Like, you want the funnel and you want the, 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 the vessel that it comes in and be able to wipe out the, you know, wipe off the shower head, wipe out the tank if you need to. Um, Bonavita is our, our personal favorite. I use it at home. Yeah, I think yeah I've, as well. I've had, I haven't had a chance to use any of the other yeah, ones. Those, the, the, lo that's love the Bonavita. what I've landed on, and it's... And it's great. Um, some other, maybe we can share some other kind of pro tips, like for example, um, wetting the filter. That yeah. was an important one that, yeah. that is sometimes overlooked. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that applies to all filtered brew methods, you know, pour over, Chemex, uh, but especially in a coffee brewer, um, you know, you use just, just plop the old dry filter in there, it's, it's, you're going to impart a papery taste. Um, it's going to absorb a lot of the water that you want to be going brewing to brewing your coffee yeah i've seen it. it's um, kind of like too thirsty so i've seen it you'll see it before like the first um first extraction of the first few seconds of coffee will go up the sides um which you want in the cup because that's that's deliciousness but it gets sucked up into the filter so that's so wet in the filter first of course um another pro tip i saw somewhere uh somewhere out on the internet was um, a, a big problem is that a lot of times the shower head isn't very even. It doesn't evenly wet the grounds, especially like if you look in the funnel and you see dry spots or you see like where jets have gone through but then a, a sort of only wet spot over here is what you can do, if you can physically do this, is turn the funnel or the whole contraption um, during the first like 30 to 45 seconds so everything gets nicely wet right away. Um, and isn't getting wet like two minutes, two or three minutes later. Um, that would, that's a nice way to do it. So take the first 30, 45 seconds and just turn the funnel underneath the shower head, um, and that'll help evenly, evenly wet everything, evenly extract. Um, I don't know other other tips like that. Yeah, I mean it's 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 one of those things. You know, again, it's it's sort of a sort of a choose your own adventure thing here. You know, you can you can take as many of these of these steps and apply them, getting better equipment. Um, a grinder is very helpful. Um, and to be able to adjust it on the fly and go, that was pretty good, but I can change it later, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, it, depending on your situation, you know, um, you know, other people may or may not be super on board with, with getting new stuff. Um, you know, so if it is, if you are, you know, into brewing coffee and you really enjoy that and, and are, you know, you've, you've, you've become aware of how good coffee can be if it's, you pay a little attention to how it's brewed and, and, and especially buying, you know, good specialty-grade coffee. Right. Um, you don't want to screw it up at that point, so you might yeah, yeah, want to... Yeah, and you can use that as an opportunity to, to share with folks yeah. uh, how, you know, find beautiful coffee and, and share beautiful coffee with other people. And uh, So you may, yeah, so you may yeah. want to even, like, if it comes down to it, maybe you want to bring in your own French press and have that in your desk and just go to the kitchen just to get hot water. Um, and make your own French press, yeah, yeah. and then go around with little cups and share everybody and convince them to give you money for yeah, the nice beer. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, yeah, and kind of like like we discussed a little bit with in the in the camping episode. Um, you know, your your situation. There's certain things in the situation that might be out of your control, and and just you know, temper you your expectations. Yeah, thusly. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, um, yeah. Another, another tip I thought of, just last one here, is the. Um, if you put the, to help wet the filter and preheat everything is if you just run, maybe you do this already, but just run, put a couple cups, like two cups or so of water in the tank and run a cycle with just the filter and that'll wet the filter and it will preheat the vessel that it goes into so it kind of freshens everything up and primes it ready for you to, to, to brew delicious coffee. And so um, hopefully that helps um, you, Derek, and also everyone else out there.
Um, but keep writing in your questions. We want to be able to help with you know coffee coffee prep stuff at home. Um, you know questions about where it came from and origin stuff and roasting potentially. We'd love to answer all of it, whatever we can do. So um, so write them in, in the comments here below or um, info at victrolacoffee.com. There's a thousand ways to get a hold of us. Um, anyway, all right. Ta ta for now. That's my favorite, that's my favorite qualifier at a table. It's, it's this, but in a good way. Yeah. It's whatever, it's whatever, it's whatever. Super awful, it's whatever but in a good way. Seemingly horrible thing. It's like, a, it's like a dumpster fire, but in a good way. Yeah. yeah.